Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration with your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day 19 of our Past Masters series. The painting I've done a study after today is a um, is a study after a painting by George and S. called <laughs> Landscape. It may have had a better title. I couldn't find it. This happens with some of these older paintings. Um, I do a bit of research when I, uh, well, getting the images is not that tough. All you do is put in, you know, Georgian S uh, landscape painting or go to Pinterest. Uh, by the way, I have a huge, uh, if you type uh, tonalism into Pinterest, you'll see my tonalist page. I think it's probably one of the more extensive and comprehensive uh, collections of tonalist paintings on Pinterest. Uh, at least I haven't been able to add anything to it for a while that I didn't already have there, so... Um, anyway, that's uh, beside the point. Uh, I've collected all sorts of paintings from all sorts of people. I have ton, a whole folder of uh, Georgian S paintings, and um, sometimes the, uh, the reference image is quite small. In fact, uh, I'm running into that right now. I've been uh, getting serious about doing more um, past master studies in fact I think I've decided to just dedicate the next hmm, month maybe a month and a half to uh, to doing some larger past masters so um, in some cases it'll be paintings I've never done before in some cases it'll be just larger versions of paintings I've done already uh, or paint uh, I haven't done the paintings already but I have made studies after some of these paintings before um, in this uh, five by seven size, which you can see we're working in today. Um, as a matter of fact, I've done, ooh, goodness, a hundred. We've got probably about a hundred and uh, seventy-five uh, past masters, or uh, with a hundred days of tonalism, twenty-five days of tonalism, whatever you want to call it. Um, all of those are five by seven or five by five. Um, so I just recently did a. Uh, well, I did a, a study which we have um, two, two studies that are up on the channel. One has got, an, you know, quite a lot of hits. It's a study after did after Francis Murphy's Sunset, and that was for an artist in the States uh, who's really a very good painter and um, uh, who was uh, going uh, from marine art to tonalism and, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's there. He was there from his first painting. Anyway... Uh, and the other one I did for a, um, a friend of mine in the States, uh, just as a sort of thank you for uh, help he'd given me. And um, both of those are on the channel, and both of those are doing pretty good. Um, recently, I did a 7x10 of uh, my favorite Georgianist painting, and I'm really happy with the way that turned out. It's sitting in my drawing area. I can see a few things where maybe I could modify a few things there. I'm debating whether I'm going to put it on the easel for a third pass, but uh, I might. Because uh, I'm pretty happy with it, but I see one or two things that... Uh, you know, the, the, the risk you run, you know, of, of uh, you know, you say, well, why hesitate? You know, if you see something you could do as well. You won't just stop with the, uh, once you put that thing on the easel, you won't just stop with the thing that you uh, thought maybe could be improved or addressed. You'll just keep moving. And in the process, you might lose a lot of um, the open and expressive quality uh, that the painting had. So this is the overworking syndrome, and uh, I've been guilty of it. Uh, I've been as guilty as any artist that ever lived. Um, so I try and just uh, sometimes... Um, what I'll do is I'll just uh, live with it. You know, I can see, well, yeah, this is a place I could have done better, but I'm not going to put it on the easel because of that. I'm not going to put it on the easel because I don't want to overwork it. And I don't want to choke all the life out of it. And it's a definite uh, risk that could be run. Alternately, uh, sometimes what I do, and I'm thinking I might do this on this, uh, and this thing, is basically just an area in the grass that is a little too symmetrical and it, I just didn't see it while I was painting so if I just add a few random uh, blops and blips here and there to break that up that might be sufficient and that's probably what I'll end up doing uh, rather than uh, you know like I say putting it up on the easel 
we'll see. Anyway, uh, you know, I've had it in my brain to do these larger, and uh, I guess it was also my brain to just kind of do a couple here and there. And uh, but um, I am very organic about my work process, and I follow my intuition. And um, sometimes things just start with an inkling and or an idea, but. Uh, ideas turn into um, modes of operation and things you want to actually accomplish and uh, I've had a, a, a big run of paintings I've done uh, of my you know my own stuff um, and a lot of successes there but uh, just you know my uh, I guess my uh, inner voice or guide is uh, painting guide has been uh, telling me well why don't you just go ahead and do a bunch of studies and what may come out of that is a further elevation in the quality of my work and so the other thing is we're just coming out of we just had Easter and that's kind of the official close of the uh, tourist season out here tourists are the main people that buy my work and um, and I've done a little bit of uh, more tourist oriented type subject matter although again in my toneless style so um, I've had a pretty good season this year and uh, probably the, be the best I've had yet and uh, you know there's that's one thing I wanted to address uh, in today's video is and I've, I've touched on this before but you know having been a commercial artist you know the distinctions between what's involved with being a commercial artist versus what's involved with being a fine artist that's producing work that's going to sell sell uh, it can be a, a bit um, subtle you know it can be um, it can be hard for people on the outside to understand what the hell you might be talking about and uh, I don't know if in a minute or two I've got left in this video if I'll be able to explain it but really it's all about attitude you know when you're a commercial artist somebody's come along and they're paying you and it'd be no different if you've been commissioned to do a work as a fine artist you're being paid to do a job and the customer needs to be happy uh, you know for everything to you know be concluded in a, in a way that's positive um, I don't take on a lot of commission work uh, mostly because I don't like dealing with any of that stuff since I was a commercial artist for so long um, and basically had to do what I was told for so long now I just uh, do my own thing but that's not the same thing say as thing, uh, knowing that a certain type of senior subject will um, sell in the area you live in and deciding that uh, you can express yourself in that way and then do things that you want to do um, with that sort of mode of operation um, where you can fall into a trap is if, 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 and I've seen this happen with many artists, is if you have a success um, on a certain type of image, maybe it was a one-off or something totally outside of what you normally do, um, then the temptation to keep doing more of that is uh, almost overwhelming because uh, you'll, you'll be rewarded financially and in other ways for doing so. So you got to just uh, follow your soul, your heart, and your intent. Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end. Thank you for joining me today. I'll be back real soon with another video. And I uh, appreciate all you new subscribers jumping on and you old subscribers for hanging around. Until uh, I see you again, take good care and stay out of trouble.